as we bring him in from Rogers Sportsnet, Blue Jays coverage. How you doing, JC? Rod, I got to tell you right off the bat, I am so impressed with your set. If you are of my vintage, you might remember watching SCTV back in the glory days. It looks like you're the host of the Sammy Maudlin show. <laughs> and, and and Bobby Bittman's going to walk in any second and, uh, and interrupt because he's filming a Christmas special down the hallway. All we're missing are Eugene Levy and John Candy and that whole crew. So thank oh. you. Yeah, I don't think any of these kids around here are old enough, but I certainly am. And, uh, hey, by the way, speaking of being in the Bermuda Triangle, you've been out here for a lot of great events, not to mention the Kinsman Dinner and Moose John, not the least of them. But the last time I saw you here, you were with Jeremy Roenick at a Pats game. Remember that uh, night? Yes, I do. I remember it quite well, yes. <laughs> yes, what happened to him? No idea. <laughs> no. Is he in jail? I, I, yes. mean, I don't know. I I have no idea what happened to him, but I, they still talk about that dinner in Moose Jaw, by the way, uh, the, the kinsman people over there and the residents of Moose Jaw. So I appreciate all the community stuff that you've done for us out here, Jamie. And, but obviously, we've brought you on here to talk about the Toronto Blue Jays, and we've got a lot of questions have come in from our viewers, and they're excited, man. Obviously, they're a little head, head of schedule in their plan, and now the free agency, they're going to be very active, it appears. Um, you must be excited. I'm, I'm excited, but I'm also uh, optimistically cautious because, um, you know, as much as they're being touted as the team to watch in both free agency and trade market, too, remember, they've got a, a stable full of really good prospects that they could unload if they decided to. Um, and apparently they have a whole lot of money, too. I guess the pandemic didn't hit Rogers quite as hard as it may have hit some <laughs> of the ball clubs south of the border. Um, I'm not privy to the numbers, so please don't ask. But I will say, based on some of the things I'm hearing, that the Blue Jays are going to be close to free spenders when it comes to free agency. Now, the question becomes, how wisely do they spend that money? There are some decent free agents out on the market, like George Springer, uh, like Trevor Bauer. Um, there are trade options out there. Most recently, I've heard the name Sonny Gray in Cincinnati and Blake Snell in Tampa Bay being... Um, possible trade uh, targets for other clubs because both their respective teams are willing to give up on them and, and sort of shave payroll, which is not necessarily surprising in Cincinnati and Tampa Bay. So maybe the Blue Jays are in a position, uh, both financially and over the trade market, to take advantage of the upcoming season. They, they got a whole lot better last year when they signed – Hunjin Ryu to an $80 million deal. They proved then that they're willing to spend. Uh, the question now becomes how much can they spend? Can they entice somebody to come quote unquote north of the border? Because the way things are going, they'll be playing in Buffalo again uh, next year. And it's let's, let's, let's just remind Blue Jay fans, it's not a case of if you throw the most money at a particular player, he's going to sign. It doesn't work that way. Players have the freedom when they reach free agency to determine uh, much like Zach Wheeler did last year when he went to Philadelphia, where they want to go. So it'll be fascinating to watch the process. One name he didn't mention, and I've been asked to ask you from one of our viewers, is Francesco Lindor. Do you think the Blue Jays will be in on him? So he's an interesting situation because he's going to be a free agent next year. He is still arbitration eligible for one more year with Cleveland. And... The thought being there are a whole host of really good shortstops that will become free agents at the end of this coming season, like Trevor Story uh, in Colorado, um, Javier Baez of the Chicago Cubs, tons of them. So if you're going to get Lindor, what you're going to have to do is, one, give up a whole lot of players to get him. Like Cleveland's not just going to give him away. <laughs> um, and two, ideally – Sign him to a contract that takes away free agency next year so you don't just get him for one year. The Blue Jays don't need Lindor for one year. If they're going to go and get him, they need him for six or seven or eight years. So how do they make that work? And are they willing to give up on certain players to get him? Um, nobody watching or listening to this program, nor I, knows what Cleveland wants in return. And we certainly don't know if the Blue Jays have a package that's good enough to get him. So I'm kind of mixed on the whole Lindor scenario. Would I love to see him play for this team? Absolutely. 
He's uh, one of the superstars in baseball right now, and he's young enough to have an impact for a long time. Uh, am I willing to see this team give up on some of their top prospects? Absolutely, because as we've learned historically, they're just prospects. Unless they actually accomplish something in the major leagues, they are no nothing but names and rankings. So I'd love to see it, but I'd also love to see it in a way where it ensures that Lindor is playing for this team long term, not just for one season and then a risk of losing him at the end of next year. A question from me. Question from we were all watching the Blue Jays playoff run intently, and it didn't take very long, as you know, but Vladdy Guerrero was non-existent. It was like he wasn't even in the series. And then afterwards, he has to lose 32 to 36 pounds and apologize to his teammates for coming in overweight. Where are you on that? Is that just youthful, not realizing that it's a big deal? Or do you think he should be held accountable? Or maybe he has been and we don't know about it. But I was a little disappointed. Okay, well, first, with respect to that very brief playoff appearance, it's very difficult to measure a player's performance, and I don't care what their name is, over two games. And if they go a collective 0 for 8, or if they go 5 for 8, then uh, it just happens to be a run of two good games. Um, and let us not forget that the Blue Jays ran into some exceptional starting pitching uh, and relieving, in fact, in that series. And it's not at all surprising that they were shut down um, as they were. With respect to the weight, and my opinion is not that popular, I'll ad admit. There are so many people that believe that that Vladdy Guerrero Jr., who I think when he came to camp last year was weighing in at about 265 or 270, should be a lot trimmer and slimmer than he is. And I always point to David Ortiz. Um, who was a slim Jim when he was playing for the Minnesota Twins, but then seemed to gain a little weight as he uh, became an iconic figure in Boston. And you can leave the whole PED question out of this conversation just for a minute. Do you seriously want Vladimir Guerrero Jr. to trim down to, I don't know, a buck 95, 200 pounds and become something that maybe he's not? Uh, that's the question I ask people who demand that this kid shake 40 pounds and apparently he has apparently based on some of the reports i'm seeing from espn deportes he's lost something like 35 pounds since the end of the baseball season which is something and the question is if 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 he's been a big kid his whole life and hit wherever he's gone except for the major leagues on a consistent basis how much do you want him to change? Do you want him to be skinny and then become a different player than he is? Or do you want him to be a first base DH type who carries a bit of weight but can still hit? Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm not as fixated on this this kid has to lose weight uh, notion as, as other people seem to be because I'm just not sold on the fact that you have to be a certain size to be um, – an all-star hitter in the major leagues. There are others have proven that you don't have to be. And I use David Ortiz as a prime example of that. Well, it was evident that they were, they were going up against the best team in the American League in the playoffs in Tampa, but I just thought they could be a lot better. And my point is, if you're going to crush him at the plate, I don't care if you're 300 pounds or you're 100 pounds, but he was non-existent in the playoffs, and Hin Jin Ru blew up. So I, hey, I get it. I guess more than anything, it was a, it was should have been a massive learning experience for this young team. Um, do you feel that it was? Yeah, I, I think so. I, I don't think there's any question. I, I think, and I believe it was Bo Bichette that, that, that sort of noted this after they were swept after the second game. He said this was such, as brief as it was, um, an eye-opener for all of us who understand that we're closer than we think. We can be competitive. We can compete. You didn't see it, I know, in those two particular games, but they actually had a good overall season against Tampa Bay. And I think they know that they are not only capable of being a competitive playoff caliber team, but I also think that the experience of going in and getting their clocks cleaned over two games by Tampa Bay made them want it even more, made them realize just how um, different it can be to be in the postseason picture at the end of the year. So we'll see. I, you know, I, I chuckle when I hear this, this whole Vladdy's got to lose weight thing. 
because I, I firmly believe that the the third base option isn't really much of an option anymore, as much as he says he wants to come to Camp Lighter and compete for a third base position next year. I really think his future is first base and DH. And, and look, I mean, one of the greatest hitters who ever played the game, Tony Gwynn, was not you know, slim. He was, he was a big man with a big waist. It's, it's, it's okay to be that way. Maybe not, you know, 300 plus pounds. I don't think we're expecting that from the kid, but I don't know. I, I just don't know why people are so fixated on this idea that he's got to take 40 pounds off. Well, I get, but he did take it off, you know, and he, and you saw the pictures of him, like he looks ripped. And uh, my thing is just produce. You can do whatever you want. Uh, that's all. Hey, how are you doing by the way? I know uh, you're a proud dad. Um, you're, you're out there in the most populous region of this country. How's everybody doing in the Campbell household? Everybody's doing very well, actually. It's, uh, it's, we're, we're all basically observing all the restrictions that we have to observe though. I mean, I have, uh, two children, as you mentioned, um, I'm a single father, so they spend, uh, two days a week at their mom's and then two days a week here at my place. And, um, we make the best of our time. They're the only two human beings that are essentially allowed in my home. It's um, it's a lockdown. We have to pay attention to it. We have to be um, we have to restrict our 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 abilities to do the things that we're accustomed to doing, so that we can protect other people. And and I uh, I'm proud of my children who have both one's 14 and one's 12, but they both understand that now is not the time to be out uh, you know milling about and going and being physically social with a whole bunch of people and um, they get it. So I'm, I'm proud of the two kids. Good for you. And uh, mentally everybody's doing fine. I mean, we're nine months into this, Jamie. I mean, I was talking with my uh, sober coach cohort the other day and I said, I didn't think this would last nine months when we first started talking about mm-hmm. this in the spring. And he goes, well, I wasn't looking nine months ahead. I was thinking about today, which is what <laughs> you're supposed to do. Yeah. But for kids like Darren Dupont here, my co-host says it all the time for kids, your kid's age, this is a large chunk of their lives. It's one thing for us to, to be patient, you know, but it's, yeah. it's difficult for kids. You know, Rod, um, you know, the younger generation like Darren sitting to your right would understand that they're still trying to formulate the direction of their lives and they need to be out um, socializing and engaging and and making their way through the journey that they're they're eventually going to take on. Whereas you and I have done a lot of that already. Yeah. Um, I don't know how you're feeling about this situation. But I said to somebody this morning, if this is what retirement feels like, I think I'm really going to like it because I have had no trouble filling my time. Um, and, and maybe more to the point is I feel it's the responsibility, especially now with winter coming. I don't, I don't know if it's hit Regina. It hasn't really hit Toronto yet. But there are so many isolated and lonely and scared people out there dealing with, in some case, mental health issues in some cases, just straight loneliness where they don't have family, they don't have friends that can be in their homes. I think it's up to those of us who feel strong enough to be on their own right now, and I happen to be one of those people, to do something every single day to prop up the people that don't have what we have. So if it's a phone call, if it's a visit outside, if it's if it's anything that can make somebody else's day better, I encourage it from from anybody that's watching or listening to this program. Yep. I say reach out to yeah, three people a day. You know, that'll keep you busy. And as far as the winter, I got a stack of books to read from Bob McKenzie and uh, your guy, Kiprios, and uh, who else? Duffy. <laughs> I'll be, I'm buried. And I've been pushing for retirement life for the last year and a half. I quite like it. Jamie, Me too. <laughs> I miss seeing you. Um, it, we, we will see each other face to face again. On the other side, Thanks for the time again, sir. It's always good uh, chatting with you. Great to see you, Rod. Sportsnet's Jamie Campbell joining us from Toronto, and we will be right back. Did you get a lot out of that, Dupes? Of course, always. Wasn't that great? That was good. He's he's one of the good ones right there. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media. 